Okay guys, gonna make a quick video. This is a Lefebvre Nitro special double barrel 12 gauge. Uh, picked it up the other day, really, really cheap. It's in bad shape. Uh, I had never worked on one, so decided, heck, uh, let's give it a whirl. Uh, learned a few things, had to build the tool. I uh, thought, well, let me make a video real quick. Um, the first thing we'll go over is just some of the basic parts. I've already taken the trigger assembly and everything out. Uh, here is your sears, obviously. Uh, let me tilt this a little bit. <coughs> Got your hammer here underneath there. Uh, main spring and your plunger and then on the front side you got your cocking cams in these holes uh, underneath the cocking cams is the cocking rod runs the entire length and comes out of the back uh, you've also got firing pin, firing pin retainers uh, you've got your lever here this is part of the safety uh, all that's pretty standard not a lot of big uh, issues with any of that. The main thing I had problems with was these mainsprings. They are bears, and I had to build a tool. So uh, the first step in what you're going to want to do when you start tearing this down, of course, uh, you're going to want to knock this pin out right here, and you'll be able to remove your sears. And then I would go to the front, knock this pin out, remove your cocking cams, the, the cocking rod should slide out. At that point you've got the hammers and they've got tension on them with these mainsprings. So you're going to want to be careful. Uh, they'll shoot out across the room, you'll lose them. Uh, eye protection, very important. Okay, uh, I'm going to get another cam camera angle and then I'm going to kind of show you how to chuck this up and then when you put them back in, uh, you know, what type of a tool you can build. Uh, so let me move the camera and we'll go into that. Okay, got the camera moved here. Uh, get a little better close up of it. Um, you look underneath, you'll see I've removed the sears, knocked the pin out, removed the sears, knocked the pin out, got rid of the cocking cams and the cocking rods. I know you're not going to be able to see up in there, but they're out. Uh, so, and you can feel here and you can tell these hammers are under under pressure for sure. Okay, I've got on my vise, I've got these little felt pads that I stick on here to keep things from scratching. Um, this thing actually chucks up in the vise in a pretty cool position to be able to work on these mainsprings. Um, and what I do is you've got back here on the lever you'll notice it's, it's flat right there and then you're flat here too so what I do is chuck it up where the cocking lever uh, holes for the cocking lever are facing you and chuck it up in between there and then of course over here is the uh, lever that opens it up like so okay <clears throat> I'm not gonna take these out what I'm gonna do is hopefully show you maybe zoom in here a little bit uh, and kind of give you an idea of the tool I made and how it works uh, let me zoom out just a hair Okay, now what I used was a 3 inch C clamp. And yes, I know it's not pretty, but it works. Uh, notice this here uh, piece of round stock that I welded in has bent. Uh, I've taken these springs out two or three times and it's bent a little bit every time. I'm going to re revisit this design. Um, this is 8 inch, this is 3 16. Uh, I think, honestly, with the clearance you have, 
here between the plunger uh, and the hammer when you pull it back and compress it. I think once you you notch the 316 out really good, I think you could thin it out on the bottom and it would not bend as bad. So probably going to grind this down and redo it. Um, but this has worked twice now. Uh, and for the money, not too bad. Uh, the first thing I did was I put a 90 degree, took a straight piece of 316, obviously put a 90 degree on it here, okay? <laughs> then I, I opened the C-clamp all the way up, okay? And I measured from this point where the plunger set, when it's free, when it's not behind the hammer, of course, and it's gonna be about in this range, okay? And then I, I tried to figure out where to put my 90, because you're want, gonna want this to go in a horseshoe to where you can slide it into the hole for the cocking rod, okay? One thing about it, notice the height here. Let me move back to this hole and kind of show you. This is a problem. Uh, I got around this problem by luck, uh, to be honest with you, because I figured out a way that it would work uh, a little better. Uh, and it was an accident. I didn't design it that way. I designed it essentially to work just like you're seeing now. Uh, go in here. This part come down. It's got a little notch. Uh, let me get this out and show you if you can see it. I don't know if you can. But it does. Let's see. It has a notch in it. There we go. You can see it pretty good. And what happens is that plunger sits in that notch and it won't jump out. Okay? So <coughs> what I figured out is I went, we're gonna let's say we're gonna put this spring in. Okay? Again, ignore the the hammer being there. Um, you're gonna put this in the opposite cocking rod. When you do that, that allows you to sort of lay this thing down the clamp. See how I'm kind of laying it down? And it sits lower and closer to the receiver. Uh, and actually it works pretty well that way. Uh, but you're going to clamp this on. You'll screw this in. You'll notice as I screw this in, it pulls this piece back, which will compress the spring. You'll then slide your hammer in there. Uh, you do have to hold a little pressure down on this clamp uh, with one hand. So it's a good idea to, what I did is I run the pin, got it started, you know, good. Uh, not all the way through, but just a little bit. And then that way I can slide my hammer in there very easily while I was holding this down with one hand. And there's not, it's not like you have to beat that, that pin in. It slides in pretty well because of the pressure on it that's going to stay. Uh, and then push it in. Once that happens, you back off of this a few turns. You might have to get uh, a small screwdriver and catch this plunger just a little bit and pull it back just a hair. And it's going to be tough to pull back to be able to get this little hook out. Um, but... Um, this worked very quick. Uh, we tried to manhandle these springs. We tried several ways of putting this in. Uh, I looked at a lot of different plans out on the internet and you would have to have a milling machine and aluminum and they were talking about set screw plates, uh, a bunch of complicated stuff. Uh, this is sort of the redneck version here. Uh, I've got about $4 in the clamp uh, and Goodness gracious, not a whole lot in the uh, in the rods there. Uh, like I said, the only the only redo I'm going to revisit this, and I'm going to actually try the three sixteenths here. Uh, I think that will work better. I think it'll be a lot more rigid, and it won't bend. Uh, so far, like I said, I've installed both springs twice. It hasn't broke on me. It's bent, but it hasn't broke. So uh, I'm very happy with it. Uh, I hope this helps some other folks out there that have messed around with the Lefebvre Nitros. Uh, maybe pulled those off, maybe you pulled one of these off and you've got parts sitting in the drawer. Well now, you might be able to get it back together. So, uh, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments, let me know. Uh, and if you've got any better ideas, uh, be glad to hear them. 
Uh, appreciate you watching, and we will catch you guys next time.